Welcome back, Video City. Today is a lovely episode. We have the twins, Rob S. Corp. Wait, I, I forgot who's who. And wait, S. Corp. and Rob Inc. That's the co. That's right. Rob Inc. The co. S. Corp. The co. Nice. When did you guys start becoming a duo? Since you came out the womb? Before, before them. Before that. Like, actually, like, nine months before that. <laughs> uh, gestation, zygotes, and all that. Uh, but we're actually identical, so it was one cell split into two. Mm. Yeah, we uh, formed the Co. as a, I guess, performance outfit um, about ten years in. So we've been doing this since so we were about ten. So you've been the Co. for ten years? <clears throat> we've gone through some iterations, but... Uh, uh, it, we've been cooperating, collaborating, so you just take off the rest of the, the, su the suffix. Mm -hmm. I okay, don't know. I get it. And you get the co. Okay, so that's why you guys chose that. Indeed, and because it's uh, a business proposition for us. This isn't a game to us. It's not a sport to us. This is business. Mm. When we get in there, we take it seriously. We watch the margins. You know, we, we, we check out our profit loss lines, you know. Um, we're making sure that we're a profitable institution and that we're establishing a legacy here, which is what you do when you establish a business. So we're taking these skills, using them properly in a business uh, context and building a legacy. It sounds like you guys do more than music. Uh, absolutely. We are renaissance men. So um, not only do we try to put messages within the music and within our approach to life, but also we do that within our communities in certain capacities, educators, uh, me uh, you know, working with community foundations and nonprofit organizations is something that we've done uh, professionally and volunteer-wise as well, so. I love that. I saw that you guys were just um, within the community doing a porch festival. You guys were a part of that. How do you guys get involved with the community? Uh, well, that was an invitation that my brother, uh, S-Corp, got just through reaching out to the network in Porch Fest. It was in Mount Airy, which is a uh, strong, established neighborhood in Philadelphia. My mother grew up there, as a matter of fact. But it's very diverse, and they wanted to do something collectively where neighbors are involved as hosts. And you, you, people have probably seen these videos of porch fest ha happening in various cities and various communities so it just gives diverse groups we were one of maybe 60 performances that day oh, wow. across this this one neighborhood so it's a concentration of creativity that you can enjoy in a casual setting and it gave us the opportunity to reach a new diverse audience and um, in a comfortable setting. We sort of grew up rapping on the porch. Oh. And historically speaking, you know, front porch culture comes from West Africa. Mm -hmm. And it's been reinforced in urban communities, Philadelphia, Chicago, the stoop culture in New York City. Um, so to bring the music back to the porch is a place we all congregate. It's a place where we all grow up. Feels and it's, it's, it's home. You yeah. know, and you could watch the block from there, so, you know. Yeah. So how long have uh, you both been creating music? Uh, without putting a date on it, because uh, <laughs> obviously this gray hair is um, just okay. wisdom, you know. I believe I might have gotten electrocuted in the booth a couple times or something, <laughs> so that's why I got the magneto going on. But all told, we've got some years in. Uh, we... Uh, we've been rapping since before AI picked up a basketball. Uh, so uh, I'm saying before he got drafted to the Sixers. I'm sorry, AI had a basketball. He's older than we are, but um, for a long time. Uh, to say we started when we were 10, and it's been a, a few decades since then. And since then, you guys knew you wanted to be a duo and create together? So the, the odd part about that is throughout the many iterations, when we first started, we were a three-man group with our good friend Drew G's, um, shout out to Drew, and uh, then we got to Atlanta, and my brother became a member of a group called Cult of Icon, mm -hmm. which my man Severe the Sniper was a member of, uh, everybody, I mean, if I named them, there are some that people know my man's, uh, Lake Show, Quam Scott, uh, Exact Boots, Kincaid, like we were a whole conglomerate, like a mini Wu-Tang down in the AUC, and... I joined up, and then after that, my brother and I began, like, just us, like, making music, just us. Uh, we were dualism, 
Uh, and just evolved from there. I've actually released solo albums under a different moniker, you know, a whole different persona. I saw, I saw that. Yeah, you he's, both he, were in different groups and had different artist names. Exactly. And so, uh, but just bec like as the co, this is really the culmination, like the solidifying of, like you said, when, how long have we been an actual duo, right? And that's something that's missing in hip hop. They just named Outkast the greatest group of all time, and people were saying, oh, but that's a duo. But we come from that lineage of EPMD, Run DMC, uh, where you knew, okay, these two complement one another, Mob Deep, I mean, even to an extent, Ghost and Ray. Day La Tribe. Day La Tribe, where you're looking at these groups of two men, and then, you know, we even have our home producers, right? We have our squad of producers. Rest in peace to my man Shimrock. Um, so, yeah, pretty much that's, uh, that sums up when we decided to reform the code. Mm. This was sort of um, a last, not a last go, but a next go to formalize it. As you said, we've been, it's changing from a family to a family business, right? Um, so we've been a duo in purpose since before we even had an idea of it. But, and we've also performed and rhymed together, but this time we're taking it seriously again. So we had to create a name and create a, a business model. A business model that, that reflects uh, that this is the serious time. You know, that everything is tight. So <clears throat> it's taking time because it's in post-production, this project, which is called Support Black Business. Um, oh, I did see that. Yeah. Yeah, I got confused. I thought you guys were selling something at first. I was like, wait, do, are they entrepreneurs or are they musicians? And then I had to dig deep and, like, look through your whole page. All artists are small businesses and, That's true. and entrepreneurs to a certain extent. But the support black business comes from, naturally, the connotation. Support black-owned and black-led businesses, but also support businesses that are operating in the black. Support success, right? Um, don't throw good money after bad mm. and find products that are of quality and that have durability and shelf life. So if we look at this new generation of sound, there's the 22nd count, right? It's TikTok music. And while you might catch 20 seconds of something that just catches you and you can't get it out of your head within our music, that's not the point. Um, it's not TikTok 22nd sound right it's it's meant to be an experience so we're um we're telling you to support quality support businesses that operate people who operate with your best interests in mind and people who are serving you quality period like um i sat and watched an award show a couple of days ago and or tr tried to watch an award show and it's hard to watch because there's no balance right you like music that makes you forget about thinking, but then you need music that makes you think. Mm -hmm. Regardless, you want music that makes you feel something. And all I felt, or all I feel sometimes, is disappointment. Mm. Or shame. Oh my god, that's really sad. So what are some of your goals for the co? The co music? Immediate goals are to attract 1,000 loyal supporters. Uh, from there, we want to grow it exponentially by 10. So 1,000 who every time we put out a record, they're going to like it, they're going to share it to their network, and their network is going to share it to their network. So we're looking for our first goal is 1,000 quality people to, to believe in what we do and to really be loyal, brand loyal to the co. Once we get that and we, we can repeat and continue to... Uh, to deliver the quality that they expect, then we can expect that exponential growth to go to 10,000, 100,000. And with that, we want to be able to give back and invest back into our communities, uh, not just through the missions that we already work for and work with, but just by giving them new hope, right? A lot of times in our professions, we're able to show the youth that there are other ways of success. And so just while you see the co, right, there's people behind it. For every the co, there's a Callianne who gave them an interview chance, you know, when they were, you know, there's a Jimmy the Saint who calls his connect. There's a Doug who's there. There's an Art, right? So being able to show that you can be positive. And another thing, I'm going to say this flat out for whoever needs to hear this. Hip-hop is not just about streets and jails and killing and anything like that. When it started, it was grown men 
grown women, grown people who wanted to have a good time and leave all that foolishness alone. So they took it to a place where they could have in t incredible dialogue, intelligent diatribes, intelligent, just everything. And for it to have turned to what it is now, it needs a renaissance. And that's why you need mm -hmm. renaissance men and women to lead that. Wow. Well said. Thanks. That's amazing. Did you want to add on to that? Uh, I think I lost the question. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay, I, mean, I have a question. Generally, <laughs> but I forgot what you asked. So. Since you guys are twins, identical brothers, and you guys have your moments of, like, freestyling, connecting, do you feel like you can read each other's mind? Like, oh, I know what word he's going to say next. Did you ever have that moment? Like, so <laughs> I, I think that it's a surprise when we like to share, you know, we go back and forth with the rhymes, and sometimes I'll hear the beat first, I'll come with a style or a flow with my own personal perspective, mm -hmm. you know, the language I use, et cetera. But this is the flow we want. So then he'll come with the flow, and sometimes I'll say something, he's like, yo, I thought you were going to say this, mm -hmm. or why didn't you say this like that? Okay. You know, it's just sort of that mind. But um, I think in terms of our synergy or our knowing what one another are thinking, when it comes to our stage performance, there's nothing like it. Mm -hmm. um, one of the best stage performers in hip-hop is Busta Rhymes. But you can't say Busta Rhymes without Spliff Star when you see his live performance because he's in his mind, right? He's on point with every rhyme. But imagine each one of them is the premier MC but also can ad-lib and play, play hype man for the other mm. with, the same, with almost the same voice, within the same voice range. So we can bring sort of a... Um, and the performance, I know when he's about to lose his breath, when I need to step in. Okay. Which or, is rare. <laughs> it's rare. He's hating. My breath control. Yeah, him. sorry. <laughs> but I know when he wants to take a, take a dip away or emphasize a point because of, I think, the inherent chemistry, but also understanding of what the motivation was in the line, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Like, I'm his favorite rapper, right? And I'm also his favorite rapper's favorite rapper because <laughs> he's his own favorite rapper, so. <laughs> <laughs> oh, nice. Let's hear a little something. Here you go. Start it off. Oh, magic. what a feeling, waking up, still being him, the villain in your story, seeing that newsworthy, magic with the baby hook, right over the rim to win, legendary flow, Cove, 6 a.m., open gym, floating in and out of cities, Willie and now, check my resume, them checks is what I'm really about, say you get it, but your style is giving serious doubt, abracadabra, the rapper ace, back to get it cracking, on the boat, and I'm the captain, team leader, quarterback, and I'll drop a hundred racks and get it back like it ain't happened, no capping, you could ask him, surviving by scratching, I'm camping in my Quarter till Tell I go and cop a mansion. Good, Good times. Time. My spells got me cast in lines. Amazing. Ethereal, eternal, everlasting. everlasting. Every last thing I ever said I get, I either got or I had them. The Philly bread phenomenal. phenomenal. Phantasm. Black master magician, polymathematician. Initiate the mysteries depicted in hieroglyphics. Three, three times, times great, three, three times, times dope. Dividends. Legend in Philly. Act Nicholas. Vigilant visions hidden in plain sight. Veteran spitters get stage fright. Women get excited. excited. Images filtered with great lighting. Instagram verse real life. These, These jokes be lying. Trying my patience. I make moves. Flying ace with a red tail. Exhale, Exhale and set sail. Out of here. Like I skip bail. The chilling hill for, for a spell. I'll never fail and never will. Baby girl. Take a ride on a carousel. In Camelot with a, a cosmonaut. Who makes it hot like Emerald. Bam. Take it up another notch. And, and I, I can take it higher still. Got, got them you all off. falling in line. Like, like a fire drill. drill. There you go. Oh. Yeah, we've got at the co music. Rob Inc. The co yeah. at the co music. The co music. Thank at you so the much. At the co videos on YouTube. Thank you, Video City TV. You all check them out. Tune in. They're on your cable. They're on your Roku, Tubi. They're on your Tubi. <laughs> They're in your world. Support black business. Support black business. Peace everywhere. Thank right you. now. Cheers. Welcome back to another episode of Video City TV. We're here live at the Producers Club. I'm your host, Kalyan, and next to me is E.D. Paris. She creates reels, and she's also a vibe curator. 
you have to check out her work. So thank you so much for being here. Thank you for having me here. I'm so excited. Yeah, all your reels are so magical. I've been watching a lot of them since last night and even more today. And I really find myself like getting lost in it. It's very like immersive and mm -hmm. like, I don't know, very trippy. Like I'm in it <laughs> kind of vibe. Well, yeah, that's the whole, um, my whole vibe is that, you know, like I want to be able to draw people into the into the lyrics in you know that the artist is portraying into the story that he's telling and I take a lot of time in making sure that every single um, still I put in there every video I put in there is telling that story mm -hmm. and I don't stop until I get that feeling and you just know that feeling yeah and this yeah. is all original work she's yeah. also on TikTok with over 14,000 followers and it's growing every single day yeah. you know and she's also worked with so many different artists too without any expectations can right. you name some of these artists sure sure um, I've done reels for um, October London mm -hmm. for back to uh, back to my place and he ran that in his story um, Rory um, you'll never know Pink Sweats. I've done uh, three of his songs, and uh, he's run them on his storyline on Instagram. I've done Richard Robson music, uh, Michael Messiah, uh, Kid Phantom. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean, I'm just so excited that they just take the time and they acknowledge my work. It's yeah. really, and really they special. Yeah. And they like collaborate on it as well. Did yeah. you have an expectation of any of the, this from I, I, I honestly, I did not. I did yeah. not. I was just so excited and felt so honored that they did that. You yeah. know, that they saw the talent there. Yeah. For so sure. So what got you started? Why did you want to start making magic? Um, well, I had a muse. <laughs> okay. They kind of right. catapulted me into, yeah. um, the emotion, the feeling behind it, yeah. and uh, I just, I just enjoy it. You know, I listen to every song at least, at minimum, 50 times. At minimum, yeah. yeah, just over and over again until I can immerse myself into the uh, lyrics, mm -hmm. into the story, and then I can put it into a video. Yeah. And I know when I've hit it because it's just. A vibe you get that yeah. you know it's you it's right. It. Yeah, you it's right. It. It's just right. Yeah. Every video is special and different and gives you that different feeling. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, yeah I and I and I've even gone back, you know, into like um, 70s and 80s, mm -hmm. which is really a rush. Yeah. Yeah. What's yeah. your favorite genre? Do you have a favorite one to I work don't. on? No. I really don't. I mean, well, okay, fine. <laughs> I guess I would have to say probably R and B. Yeah. Um, because there's just it's just so much passion yeah in the music mm -hmm. and it's and just so yeah, yeah, yeah for sure and you know who I um I also did a reel uh, for Kevin Little you did yeah and Wait, he, was it no letting go what song no was it? it was a turn me on oh it turned me on uh, yes okay yeah and he yeah, ran that, that on his page he ran both my reels really? on his page I need to see that mm -hmm. yeah it's on my Instagram feed that's yeah. so cool. Yeah, it was exciting. Very, very exciting. Yeah. That's so cool. Thank you. So well, what are some of your goals when it comes to like this real making, creating content? Um, I would eventually like to uh, make contact with some management uh, of, you know, breakout artists, um, established artists. Yeah. Because I don't really see the market there uh, that's there right now. There yeah. isn't anything. It's either the videos that are, you know regular you know videos of music that they make but there's really not anything for reels it's very unique yeah yeah, yeah. exactly exactly so that's that's uh, kind of what I'm hoping to accomplish and um, for people to want to do that yeah. yeah. So. Yeah. Yeah. You have sure. a very artistic background, so I know you don't even want to say it, but you were talking about how you just sold your camera, so you yeah. used to be into taking photos back then. I did. I had an awful lot of camera equipment. You know, mm -hmm. a lot of really nice camera equipment, and I would do a lot of still photography. Um, so I've always been into it, you know, and contemporary dance. Always had an eye. That's what yeah. that means yeah. to me. That's how oh, you're yeah. able to create that magic. And, you know, contemporary dance is something that I really um, had hoped to be able to pursue, but it just didn't work out that way. Mm. But speaking about eyes, um, I think it's important that everybody knows that um, I put my eyes in every video almost. Um, I've done it as a trademark. That way people will know uh, that it's my work. Oh, and yeah, that's yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So if you look at some of my videos, you'll see my eyes are in there. Yeah. And the reason I do that is because that way nobody can kind of copy my work. Yeah, it's very <laughs> so. unique. It's all unique and so different. Yeah. Yeah, so. that's super exciting. And then you yeah. work on this every single day. 
Have Post every day, Kelly. Every day I do a video every single day. What's your routine like? Do you do it in the morning? Do you do it at night? When do you feel it the most? You know, honestly, uh, I'll wake up at 3 o'clock in the morning, um, go out my balcony because I live in South Florida. Yeah. So it's nice and warm. <laughs> so jealous. And, uh, you know, I'll have myself a cup of coffee at 3 o'clock in the morning. And, uh, you what know. What a vibe. Uh, yeah. well, what's and your view? The ocean. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Easy Paris has a view of the ocean with her coffee, three o'clock in the morning. What about a blend? No, a blend. no, a gummy maybe, but not no. not a blend. For me, it would be a blend. But that's so nice. Yeah, I know. Um, but yeah, it, it just whenever it hits me, and it and it could be anywhere. Like I could be out somewhere, and I'll hear music, and I'll turn on and I'll put Shazam on, so I can get the name of the music, mm -hmm. and I'll and I'll just screenshot it and put it to my phone, mm -hmm. and then I'll later make a reel. Wow. Yeah, it just. It just happens. I mean, I can, you know, you can visualize it. Yeah, that, yeah. that it's going to happen. Yeah, it became a habit every <laughs> single day now. You have to be consistent with your work. And that's how she was able to reach all of these other artists because yeah. she's passionate, had no expectations, right. and she's just creating. And that's something that we all need to do in yeah. order to feel the vibe that Miss E.D. Paris is on. Coffee on a balcony, having a view of the ocean. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. Uh, thank you. Yeah, I, I really um, enjoy what I do. Yeah. Absolutely. I mean, I'm really passionate about it, and, yeah. and I believe in it, and I am just, uh, it's needed. It's so needed. Yeah, yeah. yeah definitely. Definitely, definitely. That needed. is the key, yeah, to man. really enjoy it. Yeah. Enjoy what absolutely. you're doing. Absolutely. I mean, people have said to me, they're like, oh, you know, you're getting paid, you know, I'm like, wow, I'm not even there yet. You know what yeah. I mean? I am just in the moment. Yeah. I am so in the moment. Yeah. And uh, I'm going to stay in the moment because in the moment is where I really, really want to be. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Wow. Absolutely, yeah. Thank you. It's Thank easy. You. Paris from Fort Lauderdale coming into New York City <laughs> where it's cold and there's no ocean. <laughs> But we're here today. Thank you so much for being Thank on the show. Thank you for before taking the time, we, man. Yeah, of course. Um, before we end the show, is there any special shout-outs you want to give out to anyone? You know, I just want to say thank you to every artist that has um, run my reels because it means a lot to me that you believe in me. And a shout-out to Video City, really, for taking notice. Yeah. I appreciate it. Thank really you. Good. Thank you for being on the show. Video City TV, tap in.
rolling, y'all. We got the next one coming out. We got Ben Cole from Indianapolis, a song called Black Mamba. Let's hear it, y'all. Hitters, I ride for them. Lord, to those who ride for me. I know what's slip when I'm firing. You know what's wet been sliding in. I'm Black mama. Let's go. 